Before we get started to the Gemara, tomorrow is the 13th of ER. 13th of ER is the yard site of the Rebbe's brother, his youngest brother, Bishol Ayrleib, who was born in the year Samarvav. What year is that, Samarvav? Um, it's Tafrei Samarvav is 18. No, 1896. 1896. And he passed away in Tafshin Yud Beis. He's a young man. Tafshin Yud Beis is 42. 52. 52. So, how, how, 96 to 52? The young man, 60 something years old. He passed before his mother, even. <clears throat> he passed away in, in England where he was studying math, mathematics and he was transferred to Israel after his request to be buried in Tzvas. And Rebbe made it his personal mission to conceal the information of his brother's passing from his mother. So it wouldn't, she, she was still alive, she was living in New York. And Rebbe had like written letters to his mother on his brother's behalf for years. Nobody knows if she actually knew or didn't know, maybe she had a suspicion later. But that was, he, he, imagine he's sitting Shiva, saying Kaddish, all that for his brother without his mother who lived right there without her finding out. But a little about Rabbi Sarlai Leib. So I'll just tell you, <clears throat> he was born, he was youngest of the, um, youngest of the, uh, Rebli- sorry? In 1906, what did I say? In 1896, because, I know, because um, 1940 is a 5700. They go back 34 years then. So it's... Uh, Samach Vav, so Ayin Vav, Hey Vav, Sadik Vav, Tavshin Vav, and then Tavshin Yud Beis. So he's 50, under 60 years old, less than 60. Less than 60 years old, he's a young man. Anyway, yeah. he was known even as a young child as a brilliant scholar, there's all kinds of stories of, <clears throat> of people who visited the Rebbe's home as a child, and all, all the local scholars discussing Tarot with, with, with the Rav, Rebbe Levik's younger, young children, including this youngest one, Rebbe Levik, who was known as, uh, had a photographic memory, and uh, just tell you two interesting sing- things here. There are only two brothers? Or three. There was a third between them, Dovber. Third brother. A third brother. No but sisters, it's three brothers. Yeah, <coughs> just three brothers. Uh, there's much less known about Dovber. First of all, he, he didn't survive the war. He died in the, in the Holocaust. Exactly how he died is not sure. Um, and it seemed. Anyway, there's, not, there's much less known about Dovber than there is about Dreb, obviously. Nobody ever talked about himself personally. He was a very private person. Even though he was a publicly engaged person, he didn't talk about himself at all. Re- very, very rarely made reference to his family or whatever. Anyway, but it seems like the, the Rebleviks' home was a quasi Chabad house. Right? They lived in Yekaterinoslav, the big city. It wasn't a Lubavitch city at all. Yekaterinoslav was a, was a um, massive port. Yekaterinoslav is in the port and pale of settlements. It served as a center of commerce and was founded years earlier. I think even by. I th- Quite sure was founded by a Jewish family as part of this agreement with the Tsar, and it became a big center of business. And it wasn't necessarily a Hasidic town; it was a metro- metropolis with all kinds of, you know, secular Jewish strains and Zionisms and socialisms and all the isms that existed at the time. And there was also the Chabad community, but it was very small. The big shul wasn't the Chabad one; the Chabad one was a smaller shul. But the fact that Belevik, their father, became the Rav there as a Chabadnik and as a young man was a big deal and a whole story in its own right. But the Rebbe's home, growing up, was a Chabad house in that sense. There's all kinds of stories of uh, inviting neighbors for Febrengans and giving classes to people who weren't religious, uh, including this Rebbe Sarlai Leib, who either ran some organization called Teferis Bachorim or was involved in some organization called Teferis Bachorim, which was about uh, getting university, Jewish university kids to come, and he would give them the shirim while he himself was studying uh, those, those very secular studies with them. He was, a math- he, he was a mathematician by profession. So I'll just tell you two incidents with the Bissell, with, with the Bissell, let me just give you an idea. So in, in the, um, <clears throat> in the diary, the Shimus of, Shimus Harivash, which is, there was grandfather, Bissell, Levi's was, was grandfather. Their father's Reb Levi Yitzchak, who's my namesake, and then his father's a Baruch Schneer. So Baruch Schneer writes that in Ayin Hay, so when Rabbi Sarlai Leib was nine years old, he went to visit the Rebbe Ashab, who was the Rebbe of Chabad at the time, 
And he tells the Rashab that my son Rablevik has a son who is an Eloi, who is an outstanding scholar, who is Bucky, that is, uh, what's the translation? Bucky is um, an expert, expert or, or, or uh, has committed to memory all of the Gemara and all of Medrash, and he can learn very well. The Rabbi asks him, how old is a boy? So he says, with thanks to Hashem, Shvu is time, he'll be nine. This is an idea of, of the kinds of brains we're talking about. Someone who before nine years old is bucking Gemara and Medrash. And another story that gives you an idea of the more spiritual side. Is in the Rebbe's notes. After they passed away, they found, uh, after Gimel Thomas, they found the Rebbe's uh, office, the Rebbe's notes, <coughs> which are his diary, which are mostly um, his notes for, cl- for lectures he would give. So it's mostly Torah scholarship. It's more cryptic because it's his own notes. So it takes more effort to understand them. And there's a whole team of scholars who have worked through them to try to understand all of it. But then every now and again, you get a, a story, a personal story in there. So on Hey Tevis, in the year Tafresh Petes in Riga, the, Rebbe is en- the entry of the Rebbe's diary reads as follows. I went into, according to my father-in-law's instructions, to the office of my father-in-law, the Rebbe. I'm talking about the previous Rebbe. This is the Rebbe writing. And my father-in-law, the previous Rebbe, tells me uh, that he wants to give me regards for my brother Yisrael Arya Leib, who at the time was living in Leningrad, while the Rebbe, pre- previous Rebbe is in Riga. And the Rebbe are in Riga. Now, earlier when the Fidik Rebbe was himself was in Leningrad and Rebbe Sarlai was there, that's when the previous Rebbe got to know Rebbe Sarlai Leib and Fidik Rebbe really liked him. And that's when, he, that's when Chassidim got to know Rebbe Sarlai Leib because Rebbe Leib, because he was a Rav in this big town, and wasn't really, uh, a lot of the Chassidim of the time didn't really know who he was and certainly didn't know his children. People who ended up in Yakutinislav knew who he was, certainly, especially later when, um, when uh, Tem Chatzmimim the yeshiva was shut down by the government and moved for a period to Katinislav, and Rebbelevik took care of them then, and that's when Siddim got to know who this Rebbelevik was, <clears throat> even though Rebbelevik was a big cause of the Rebbe Rashab, the Rebbe before the previous Rebbe. But at any rate, so the, the, the Fidik Rebbe knew that Rebbelevik was Rebbe 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 his brother from Leningrad. So in the morning in Riga, he tells him, I have regards for me from your brother who's living in Leningrad. So when I asked if he got a, if, like, did you get a letter from my brother? So my, the Friedrich Rebbe says, no. I heard a Maimach said this together with him from my father. The Friedrich Rebbe, the, the Rebbe had passed away a few years earlier already. And the Friedrich Rebbe is in Riga, Rebbe Shalalei was in Leningrad, and he's telling the Rebbe that your brother and I heard a Maimar from my father. And he explained, the previous Rebbe explained, last night I saw in a dream my father, the Rebbe Hashab, uh, came to me and he had a uh, silk cloth in his hand and his face was shining very much. The last time I saw him like this was in the year Tafresh Samaches, 11 years before this, when I saw him in such a shining mood. And my father told me, Mazel Tov for the hat. Hmm? Don't know? Uh, the chapeau, huh? For the hat, thank you for the hat. Uh, Mazda for the hat, yeah. referring to a shtaimel, oh, yeah. to a shtaimel, to the big shtaimel. I don't know exactly what this means. I'm not sure what, what this means exactly. Um, then he said, they can go in. I opened the door. In other words, the previous Rebbe standing in, in, in the dream, he's standing with his father, the Rebbe Shab, and he opens the door, and a few people came into the room, and amongst these people was your brother, Rebbe Sarlai Yerleib. Slowly, they came forward, and I held him in one of my hands, held, holding the Rebbe's brother. This is the previous Rebbe telling the Rebbe. My father said to Fidik Rebbe, the Rebbe Ashab, asked me, who is this? Hmm. Pointing to the Rebbe's brother. You're very, you're young then, right? Sorry? You'd be very young if that's, if that's the dream, Samach Es. Samach, no, 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 the dream is in Peites. Right, but, but the and he said, the last time I saw him with a shining face, Samach Es. But the dream is happening in Peites. Oh, Peites. Oh. In Peites. So, he's, so the Rebbe Shalalev is, how old? He's born in Samach Vav. Yeah. So he's 15 years old. Thir- he was born in Samachvav to pay tests. 13. So he's 13 years old. Okay, fine, yeah. So 
So my father, the Fidi Gabbar, the Fidi Gabbar speaking, and he says, my father. No, sorry, no. Samach Ayin Pei is twenty-three, not thirteen. He's twenty-three. Samach Vav to Ayin Vav to Peva to Peitas. He's twenty-three. Twenty-three. So my father says the Fidi Gabbar, the Barshab, in this dream, asked me, "Who's this young man who walked into the office and that I'm holding his hand?" After a few seconds, uh, the Rebbe Hashab said, Oh, I know him. I know who you are. And then, and then the Rebbe Hashab said a mimer in the dream to, to the assembled, the Fridic Rebbe, a few other people amongst them, the Rebbe's brother, Rishel Leib. This is all the Fridic Rebbe telling the Rebbe this dream. And in the parentheses, the Rebbe includes a brief synopsis of what that mimer was. So it's not just like a random dream. The Fridic Rebbe is reviewing the mimer. The Fridic Rebbe is reviewing a mimer Hasidic discourse that he heard in a dream to the Rebbe that he had heard together with the Rebbe's brother and this is why he's sending him regards from his brother and then the Fridika Ba'ath and this is the most amazing part afterwards the Fridika Ba'ath tells the Rebbe please ask your brother uh, if he remembers the mimer if he, if he remembers this so, so which means it's not just the Fidi Kibbe is having a good dream about somebody else. If the Fidi Kibbe is in a dream, hearing a mime or this with somebody else, then that person was there too. So please go ask him about it. This is the level of people we're talking about. And then the footnote they add here, it should be noted that there's a letter from, the, from Reb Levik, the Rebbe's father, to the Rebbe, in which he says, please tell me more about the mimer that you told me your father-in-law heard in the dream together with our together with your brother Yisrael, and it would be it would be a good thing if you corroborated with label about this. This is the, this is the level of people we're talking about. Just to give you an idea. Okay, so his yard site is tomorrow, and there's a number of occasions that everyone is very happy with those who marked his yard site, and especially those who went to his um, Kever. his caver in Svat. Where? Svat. Where? So he passed away in London, but he moved on the Rebbe's request to... They moved from uh, Europe to Israel? Yeah. He wasn't buried. He, was, he wasn't buried. They just did, they did the Kfur and the there. He was passed away. I think, I think in Leopold, that's where he passed away. Sorry? He's buried in England. He's buried in Eretz 